Hey guys, Gaijin Hunter here, and I wanted to share with you some just miscellaneous 30 minutes of video footage of the closed beta for Monster Hunter Explore. If you're not familiar with this title, um, it's I, I'm assuming they might bring it global, but right now it's Japan only. It's for both iOS and Android. Uh, and it's going to be coming out this year, um, and they're just doing the closed beta from today for just three days. Um, and the closed beta is itself is actually on Android because it's so much easier to do closed betas on Android. So anyways, I just wanted to show you off some video footage, uh, how it is. I'm not actually a really big smartphone gamer, uh, I have to admit that. Um, but I wanted to give it a shot because this game leverages the third generation assets, which would be like Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Um, and it seems like it has high production value, so... Um, I was very curious to see how this goes. So right now I'm just skimming through the menus, uh, seeing the different choices you have, which is like your top screen and your events and all that. Uh, but we're just going to go in here and I think uh, I play a little bit here. So this is me just checking the news and the, the options, uh, different things to do. So the idea behind this game is it's supposed to almost be like an adventure. I mean, think like Candy Cross, right? Like there's like six different islands. As you progress, you unlock the islands, and there's a light story behind all of it um, where you're trying to uncover something. Um, but basically, you're going to go on a series of hunts um, that are like three scenarios or like three little scenes. One hunt is like literally like two, three minutes. It's, it's not long at all. Um, and the idea is that it's very easy to control. This is something you might want to play in the train. And you can collect uh, cool equipment, gear, and stuff like that. It even has an, a multiplayer mechanic, which we'll look at uh, somewhere in this video here. This is just your profile. You can screw around and see some actions. Now, you're not tied to one weapon. It's just like the console games where they give you one of everything. Um, and you're going to be collecting different types of weapons like all the time. So, uh, I do like the idea that this, might, this game might actually get people interested in other weapons. Which is cool. Now granted, it's not a full 3D game in the idea that you run around completely free and you have to control everything. Um, but it does give you some nice simple controls in a way that you can actually feel like you are hunting, uh, which I think is impressive. This is just the equipment screen. You can see there's all the different types of gear, um, different weapons that you can equip. Uh, right now I have the greatsword on, um, so I think I might go in here and change that. Oh no, I actually, this is um, going in for strengthening. So you can actually spend Zenny and a little bit of your consumable items that you earn from hunts to bolster your weapon. So let's just go into quest because I know this is what you guys want to see. So the idea of the gameplay is actually pretty simple. You have one button that you use, um, and that's that circle button there. If you hold down and you drag it left and right, up and down, you can actually move your character freely around the playing field. You'll see that red target dot on the monster that's actually who you're targeting. You can actually tap the screen to change who you want to target. And for larger monsters, you can actually tap body parts and choose which one you want to hit. Um, if you swipe anywhere on the screen and not the button, you'll actually do an evade in that direction. It doesn't seem like there's a stamina bar at all. So I think you can just do this stuff as freely as you want, which is cool. And for each weapon, there's a different command for if you hold down on the attack button. For the great sword, obviously, it's the charge attack. Just tapping on it will do a series of attacks, like just a regular combo. Um, so that's cool. You can see I'm not used to the controls at all, so I'm going to get knocked around pretty hard. Um, especially with great sword, it's a little hard. Um, and here you you see like some special skills. Like I think they're still working on it. Because uh, sometimes the camera doesn't quite catch it. Um, but the idea behind these hunting skills is actually pretty similar to what I think they're going to try to do in Monster Hunter Cross. Which is there's one or two different type of hunting skills that you can equip. And then after you ser you know satisfy certain conditions, you can then hit the button and they do the attack. Now I have no idea how this is going to work in Monster Hunter Cross. No one knows. They haven't revealed that information yet. But it is interesting to see that this game has the same idea where there are skills that both do big attacks, there's ones that buff you or heal people, and stuff like that. So 
Uh, it makes me think that this is going to be a big thing for the series of Monster Hunters, this customization of what special skill you bring in with you. And I'm super excited to see what that might be implemented like in Monster Hunter Cross. But one of the things that really struck me cool about this game is like, unlike most mobile games, which is just tap, 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 and visually see what's going on, there is actual gameplay here. Like, if you know the monsters, and like for example, like with Azeroth, you know that, you know, when he does a claw swipe, he does it three times. So if you know that kind of stuff because you're a series veteran, you can actually dodge and evade the monster and actually hunt pretty good. Um, so I'm very impressed with how they've implemented the battle system so it actually feels like a battle. So here you get your rewards and you can spend the whole game's main currency here are these like gems, these hunting gems. And you can buy them with real money or you can get them from completing like achievements and stuff like that. But you can use these everywhere in the game. Um, so for example, if you want four more rewards, which we're going to use here, you can unlock those. Um, if it's one of these items, it's like an equip or it's a weapon. Um, so you always have a chance of getting one. So this is the Rogi uh, Waste from the Great Rogi, which is cool. And they have uh, skills and stuff like that that they activate. So no real self-management where you need to do decorations and stuff like that. It's just collect cool armor, you like it, then pump in a bunch of zeni and items to power it up. Very easy to understand if you ask me. So if you did a hunt, I guess, you know, like if they have a rare hunt or an event monster and you really want to get the maximum rewards, you can either save up and use those hunting gems or you can then spend real money to sort of maximize the amount of reward, the rewards that you get. But you still have to kill the monster, so it's not like you're just buying uh, items, which is cool. So here I'm going to switch to the longsword. Again, I, every weapon is different the way that it uses the tap and the hold. So for longsword, the way that it works is that if you just tap the attack button, he'll do the normal like spirit combo. And then if you, you know, hit it with the round slash at the end, you'll then lo level up uh, your spirit gauge. And then once you have spirit gauge, all you have to do is hold the attack button and you'll just start spamming spirit attacks. It's a little different than how it works in the console, but I think this is one where I think if you can get the positioning right, you can actually do quite a bit of damage. Um, the, each hunt is a series of three areas, right? So you have one area with monsters and then you have this possibility that it's a gathering point. That's what I got here. So it's almost like a free bonus room where you open up a treasure chest. This is pretty common for these types of games. Uh, so for these, you just go and you just tap a button and you get an item. This could be a key item in the game that you need to progress the story, or it can just be some materials for powering up your weapons. And then the third is always the boss room, so to say. But I really like how they did it where the first two areas are really just for warming up, um, and they're not difficult. And the last area is definitely a longer more action focused event. So I'm using a level one longsword, so it's really weak. I actually didn't uh, buff it at all. And for this game, all it takes is a little zenny and you can buff it up. So this fight is gonna take a lot longer than it should, but that's fine because I wanted to show off how the gameplay worked and how it looks. So I was still getting used to it myself. Um, with the Great Jaggy, you can't do it, but with other monsters, you can tap the body again to target certain parts, which I think is a very cool idea. Um, if you ask me, it's the most accessible way to bring Monster Hunter to the mobile device. Who would have thought that uh, you'd have to whack the Great Jaggy that many times, huh? Then you do have a NPC companion hunter that's with you. I think the idea is that later in the game, I think you might be able to bring like a friend who's on your friend list with you. Um, but I imagine they're going to level cap it in some way so that, you know, your companion doesn't just kill the monster in one hit. As far as I can tell, uh, at least with the earlier um, battles, it's not really easy to die. Um, but I think in later battles, it's going to be pretty serious. So it's going to be a mix of both the amount of grinding that you've done, obviously, because these games rely on that. But also action as well, because... You have free movement. If you don't move, the monster is just going to keep hitting you over and over again. So, uh, very cool. So here, what do we get? We got uh, bone guards. So just an arm piece. Nothing special. 
And of course, just like the console games, I always play with a female hunter. I don't know why that is. It's just I, you know, I play a male in life, right? So the last thing I want to do is to escape from reality and roleplay as myself. Uh, I'd rather just get an escape into a world that's not reality. So I like the idea of a female hunter. I never really think that it's me, though. So it feels almost like a nurturing thing where I, I care about the character and I want her to get strong, so it's fun. So on the world map here, you'll notice there's these little nodes that are pink. These are story uh, events and you can see them over and over again. So if you tap a story node, you get sort of the conversation which sets up the next uh, village. And then if you tap um, the quest icon, the camp ones, then you can access the different quests. So here we're running into a new NPC who, you know, he had a bridge, but the great um, Roggy, I think it is. Um, no, it wasn't the great Roggy, I'm sorry. He was needing uh, monster items, which I already had, so I'm just going to go and deliver them. So it's kind of like a delivery quest type thing, right? And that will create the bridge that he was working on so that we can access the next area. Yay! Very fun. And you can skip all the conversations. Um, but I'm gonna guess that there's some writer in the, this team that was trying to do a clever story. So if you're into that stuff, maybe that's cool. But here we go. We have a new hunting ground against bull fangos, which I absolutely hate. These monsters just suck. So you can get, um, you can actually see what type of air, uh, items you can earn from the quest. It just tells you, is it easy to get or low to get in terms of percentages. Um, and then you can choose, obviously, what uh, palicos you take and all that. Then you have the option of spending those hunting orbs to either power your hunter up temporarily. Or I'm going to use here is like an auto feature where you're just going to auto battle. So it just costs uh, some items here. But if you notice, it's on total auto. So you can just sit there and watch the hunter just do the best they can, the AI. So let's go kill some Bill Fangos. Yay! So this is the Sword and Shield. I'm actually going to take off the auto, which I shouldn't have done because the Bull Fangos are just as annoying in this game as they are in any other Monster Hunter. Um, but the idea with the Sword and Shield is that you can use items, like the potions here which is great. All you do is tap the icon and you can use the item. Um, you do have a guard button on the right hand side that you can hold to guard. Um, and then if you tap, you're just going to do your standard um, long combo. And if you hold on the attack button, you'll do the shield combo. Um, so you see you get access to uh, most of the attacks from the main game, but in a very accessible way. Now the movement is all me. There's no automated movement, but you do sort of your hunter will turn towards the monster that he's locked on um, so that's the only type of assisted movement in the game other than that it is kind of an action game you have to move your character around let's see what we got here I think we just got a new sword and shield that I just uh, stupidly ignored and we got our next quest which is against a great jaggy so I think I'm going to change my weapon again. So I wanted to try out new weapons and show you guys a little taste of how they work. I didn't want to show all of them off. Um, not only because the game has a stamina system, so I may run out of stamina and have to wait. Um, but also because I don't think you want to see all of them. So I'm going, actually I'm doing the dual swords here, I'm sorry. So I have the dual blades and right now I'm spending a whole bunch of zenny to power them up. It's Zenny plus a item. Now one of the things that I think is really clever, which you'll see me do here, is that when I hit a point where there's an item that I need that I don't have, the game will actually let you see exactly what quest offers it. And if that quest is available, you can just tap the button and jump right to it, which is super cool. So right now, because it's in closed beta, they have a event quest going on. That you can it's almost like the online gathering hall you could do it solo or you can do it with multiple people in real time which is very impressive uh, i'm going to do it in multiplayer here um, but the idea of this event quest is that it gives a lot of these special items for uh, strengthening your weapons 
It's another gimmick that a lot of these online games do for mobile devices, but the way that it's implemented is really good. You see, I just created a lobby, and now you have all these hunters jumping in. There's a little chat board you can talk. And because the game just came out, people are running in and out, in and out. So I'm going to go here and uh, set the lobby. Realize that not everybody had confirmed what th that they were ready to go. Uh, and here we go. So we're going to try out a multiplayer game. Now I actually had a problem with the capture. I was using the um, Android uh, debug bridge. So you'll see me skip a little bit ahead here in the video. Um, I had some stuttering going on, but I did managed to recover enough to show you the rest of the quest. So here we are against in Azeroth. I was having a really hard time figuring out the dual blades. So the idea is that if you keep tapping on the dual blades, um, your gauge will build up, but it builds up like really slow. Um, and that's that white gauge in the middle. And if you build it up all the way, then you go into demon mode, and then the controls are if you just tap the attack button, you'll do demon mode attacks. And if you hold it, you'll do the Demon's Dance, or Devil's Dance, whatever it's called. Um, I was having a really hard time. I thought this weapon was a little hard for me to use. I did offline, not on video, but I tried the Lance. Um, and the idea with the Lance was that if the monster was far enough away, and you just uh, tap the attack button, your guy will actually charge it after him with a Lance charge. And if you're close by and you tap it, it just does the triple... Uh, you just tap it over and over again and just cycles the triple thrust and then if you hold it down it does a counter guard um, so if you hold it down you go into the counter motion in case you get hit I don't know whether or not I don't think they're going to change it so you can do evade lancing um, <laughs> it just says doesn't isn't set up for that so here you see I got all those heart items it's the uh, items I needed for leveling up my dual blades So we'll go ahead and just keep leveling it up. And then we've run into a wall where uh, there's another item I need. Um, but I did have the quest available, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump in there. And try out the dual blades again. So wish me luck. I did really bad the first time uh, on the online quest. One cool thing is that the loading, this was captured on a Galaxy 5. Um, but the loading was really zippy. Um... I was, I was quite impressed with how they can use very high quality assets, but not have high loading time. Um, one thing to note though, is that the application is actually pretty big. Um, when you download it from the store, it was like 47 megabytes, but after a really cool intro movie and then an intro tutorial, which I thought was actually really well done, um, it starts to download the game data. And then it, I think it downloads like 300 megabytes of data or, or more. Uh, and then it's all compressed, so that when it uncompresses and installs it, the game, at least in its beta form, is like 1.3 gigabytes or something like that. So it's it's a pretty hefty game. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much data is shared when you're online. If it's not much, this could be really fun to play in the train. So here we are, we're going off against a... Uh, what's this, a great jaggy? Yeah. So I'm going to be able to show off demon mode just a little bit here. I didn't do a very good job. If you notice, if I, if you get used to it, you can flick the screen um, to do evades, um, which I really think is going to be key. So it's cool to know that the more you play this, the better you're going to get at Monster Hunter on the console because you're going to get the idea of reading your monster and where, when to evade and when not to. And because they really do adhere to the distances, like your monster will turn towards the monster and hit him, but it still has the same distance that that move has in the console game, so I really like that. It's very well done. So we got an S. Yay! So if you get an S, you earn a hunting orb. Uh, it's, it's almost like a triple star for angry birds or something, right? And again, those, um, those orbs are used for either cheating and doing the auto mode, and that's not really cheating. Um buying stuff in the shop uh, and doing all sorts of other stuff so here I was just looking through my different weapons and I wanted to try out the switch axe uh, I think this is gonna be the final weapon I'm gonna show here I'll just explain how it works because I didn't do a very good job when I was playing it but then I realized it afterwards so the idea of what they did with the switch axe is that you're in axe mode and every time you hit the monster 
your gauge for the sword mode goes up. Um, and at any time you can hold down on the attack button to switch into sword mode. When you're in sword mode, all you do is you can just tap the attack button, it'll do the really cool uh, sword attacks. Or you can hold, if you still have gauge left, you can hold down on the attack button while in sword mode, and he'll do that super like elemental burst. So again, a little bit different than it is in the console games, obviously. Um, but that's by necessity. So this is just like a little screen that tells you the controls. Now if you guys haven't seen the trailer, go check that out on YouTube. There is an actual new variant of the Rathalos that's on, that's like completely in fired. Um, so it's pretty cool. <coughs> okay, here we start the quest. Again, just small little monsters that you can whack and hit. I imagine when people want to grind on the train, they're just going to spend the hunting orbs for the auto mode and just let it go. The Rage. So here I am, I'm going into uh, sword mode without really understanding what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> Which, I guess, isn't that how it always goes with a new game, right? If you notice, I do love to tap that special attack button every time it lights up. It's nice and fun. I'm not exactly sure what makes the bar go up for that. I think it's the amount of damage that you deal, um, but I could be wrong. Now, I actually got trapped in the corner here. The monster, they're not toning down the AI so much for this game. Like, they still go after you. Um, so, a word of the wise to learn how to move around. Uh, otherwise, you might get yourself stuck in the corner. So, because I didn't understand the controls, this fight took a little bit longer than it need, needed to, I think. Here I started getting the idea of sword mode. But I was getting my ass kicked. I hope that in the final version they make the super special attacks a little bit more flashy. I mean, it starts out really flashy, but then the hit itself just seems very flat. Um, so hopefully they will improve upon that. That would be nice. Rogi is a real pain in the butt to fight, even in the console games, with the constant barrage of poisonous gas and tail checks. So if you think this looks like an annoying monster, um, trust me, you're right, it is. <laughs> Kill him. Switch Axe is one of my favorite weapons in the series, uh, the main series. It is really a fun weapon to play, so... Check out my tutorials on my YouTube channel if you've never tried out the weapon before. I think you'll like it. Okay, we're just going to zip by. I only got clear time of C, of course. And, oh, we got an item. What is it? Oh, yeah. We got, I think this is the Kudopeko uh, hammer. So, sweet. It's called the Flint uh, something. So, forgive me if I'm wrong, I think it might be Kudopeko. I could be wrong though. So, I'm going to go try this out. I do like on the loading screen, if you tap it, you get the little cat meows, which is cool. So, one thing that's tricky is when you equip an item, it doesn't stay equipped unless you hit yes to register it. Um, and it just seems a little counterintuitive because in Japanese it says, would you like to register it? And it almost sounds like, do you want to make this a saved set? And you don't. So if you hit no, it actually doesn't equip it at all, so I think they can improve on the messaging a little bit here. Okay, and since we took down the monster that we needed to, uh, we got our next uh, quest are opening up, and this one is against an Azeroth. So let's go in there and try to kill it. I did really bad with the hammer as well. Um, you're just going to see a pattern because I just downloaded the game. So the idea with the hammer is that if you tap the button uh, repeatedly, it'll do the three pound and then the home run combo. If you hold down on it, a little charge gauge appears, and that's your charge attack. So obviously if you release it on the first charge, you run in and you do the uppercut. And then if you let it go all the way and you release it, um, you'll do the super pound. 
Now, one thing that was a little bit hard, um, but what you can do is when you have the when you're holding down the attack button and you're charging up for an attack, you can actually move around still by uh, sliding your finger. So you sort of get yourself into position and then let go and you can do the uh, super pound. I didn't get a KO. You see me whiffing on some of these massive attacks. And again, I, I applaud them. Uh, a lot of these games in Japan, they are they just let you auto hit an enemy and it's just a matter of grinding um, and that's it. But this game is actually asking you to control and move your character around and time things out. So kudos to them, man, for trying to break the gap between the, some of the more mindless games, uh, especially here in Japan. Um, like those card games and stuff, um, versus a game like this, so, I think it's cool. I was really hoping I'd get a, K a KO, but I didn't. Uh, oh well. So you actually notice there's a health gauge, which is uh, a new for the series, um, and it's by necessity as well. Here one of the palicos I think it was uh, laid a shock trap so I was trying to lure it in and I was practicing this move around while a level 3 charge. But it was going after somebody so I was getting a little impatient. But here we go, I'm going to walk into the shock trap. Boom. Dead. So in the time I played it, which was about I'd say 2 hours today, I actually had a really good time. Um, which is saying a that's a huge compliment because I don't play games on my phone generally because I I even though you can turn it off I know that the phone has my work it has my wife it has everything on there and when I play a game I like to escape from everything I like to be fully immersed which is why I like dedicated game devices so this unlocked one of the key items for the island and once you collect all the items you discover a new uh, mystery or something and you can progress so there is a story here apparently that you can follow I'll probably be one of those impatient people who wouldn't watch any of the story to be honest um, but that's it I hope you guys enjoyed a sneak preview at the closed beta from Monster Hunter Explore if you like this and you want it for the West um, they haven't announced it so go ahead and start hashtagging MH Explore for the West and let Capcom know that you're interested. Um, I think it would be a fine addition for the West and could possibly introduce new people to the series. So, hope you enjoyed the preview and happy hunting.